Good morning, good morning. Good morning, everyone. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Good morning, good morning, good morning. <clears throat> For truly, this is the day that the Lord has made, and I am truly rejoicing and glad in it. Welcome to Shield of Faith Ministries featuring the Spoken Word Broadcast. Um, we're on each and every Sunday morning at 10.30 a.m. to speak what the Word of God um, has to say from His Word, a Word that's going to help you and encourage you. I just thank God once again for another opportunity to be able to come before you with the Word of God. Uh, I know that um, if I'm, I would like for you to share this broadcast with your friends and family. If they don't have uh, Facebook, they can go to the YouTube channel at the end of the broadcast to see today's broadcast posted, as well as any past broadcast. They can go to Pastor Sandra Carter, The Spoken Word, um, to watch. I also encourage you to have a pen and paper handy so you can take notes. Um, you want to um, take notes and use what I give you to study during the week, because I know that the word will bless you. Uh, I do give scripture. That's why it's called the spoken word. So with that said, uh, in addition to that, if you would like to give to this ministry, you can give through Cash App. You can give through Givelify. You can give through Zelle, especially if you know me personally and you have my cell phone number. If you would like my cell phone number to give uh, through Zelle, just inbox me on the Facebook page and I will provide that information. But God is so good. Just pray about it and ask God, you know, if this is what he would have you to do. It could be $5, it could be $20, it could be $1,000. Um, the word of God said we need to ask, begin to ask uh, for people to give. So with that said, I'm going to get going because I know I have a word for you today. God has a word that he put in my heart early in the week that I want to share with you. So Father... Heavenly Father, we come before you just to praise you, first of all, to give you glory and to give you praise. We thank you, O oh God, for once again giving us this opportunity to come before you to share the gospel, the truth. And I ask, O oh God, that you move me out of way and that you allow the Holy Spirit to rise up in me and to just take control of this word this morning. We pray that as we open your word today, as I share the gospel, the truth, you will give us and the ones, the people listening, grace to hear your word, that you would give us the grace by your Holy Spirit, through the power of the Holy Spirit, that these words would not fall dead on our ears, but they would give us uh, ears to, or eyes to see and ears to hear and hearts to understand what the good news, what the gospel says, the gospel of your son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. We just thank you today and we ask these things in Jesus name because we know there's power in his name. Open up the ears of the people. Let them receive your word and most of all, let them accept you as Lord and Savior. Not just those persons listening to this broadcast this morning, but to each and every person who hears your uh, about salvation. Not just this broadcast, but churches across the United States and throughout the world. I ask in Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. Let's give God a hand clap of praise. I can't see you this morning, but I'm just asking you to give God a hand clap of praise. Not me, but give God a hand clap of praise. So let's get started, amen, because I know that I am truly excited about what God is doing and what he's going to speak to you today. So once again, get your Bible or get your pen and paper, write down scripture and uh, read it later. If I go a little bit too fast, just look at the broadcast over again, and then you can pick up the scriptures that you, you missed. Hallelujah. And I just thank God for each and every person who tunes in each and every week to hear the word. I check the numbers at the end of the week, and my numbers are going up, and I thank God more and more people are listening. But, but I know this is what God would have me to do. So, you know, one of the things that God showed me, because... You know, I, I seek him and ask, Lord, what is it that you have me to speak? And there's times it's good to hear repeat messages from time to time where I can change it up and, and you gain something that you didn't gain the first time that you hear it. 
Um, we also need to be reminded what the word of God says about life, about various topics that you have heard me minister and preach about. For instance, I preached in uh, messages on faith, on prayer, on righteousness, on salvation, on perseverance, spiritual warfare, and on love, and many, many more. There's hundreds, of, uh, over 100 or close to 200 messages out on my uh, YouTube channel. Once again, Pastor Sandra Carter, the spoken word that you can go and listen to that will encourage you. And this past week, it was during my prayer time this week that God spoke to me so clearly. I was in prayer with my prayer partner and I began to speak in the spirit and tongues and, and afterwards God made it so clear and I wanted to share what he told me. Just two words he said and it just encouraged my heart and had me refocus and take a look at um, how I handle the situation. And he just, and the two words he said was, just ask. Just ask. God said, just ask. And that's the topic uh, of my message today. God said, just ask. Simple as that. It's not deep. You know, people want to make the word so deep. But God said, just ask. So in the word of God, Jesus has asked us to keep our focus <clears throat> when you read the gospel and when I preach on heaven, which we cannot see and not on a world that we can see. He has told us to put our faith in him whom we cannot see for what? For our daily provision. Jesus has told us to love people that seem to be unlovable. He has told us not to judge people and to be critical of one another because he told us to love our neighbors as we love ourselves. And thou shalt love the Lord with all thine heart and, and with all our soul and with all thy mind. And this is the first commandment that he gave us. But he also told us in the word that we ought to always do what? Pray and do what? Pray without cease, ceasing. That's why he said, just ask. I want you to grab hold of that and just ask. God is telling us to just ask. He is doing what? He is inviting us to go to him, to come to him in prayer so we can cast all of our cares upon him. He is telling us that we can go to him in prayer, that we can lay our burdens down at Jesus' feet to share whatever is in our heart with him. I don't care what it is. We can go to him in prayer and talk to him and ask him for help. What you need to understand, we've talked about prayer being a pipeline of communication between God and his people. I've talked about it before between God and those who say they love him. But if you say you love God and you never go to him in prayer, do you really love him? How are you demonstrating your love for him when you don't even talk to him or express how you feel about him? We are taking the time each day to engage in loving fellowship with someone who we say we love. And that's what happens when we pray. I love you, Lord. And I'm coming to you because I know you want to hear my voice. I know you want to seek me. And when we go to him in prayer, he speaks and he says, my sheep know my voice. In Philippians chapter four, verse six B, it tells us so clearly this, this is what the word of God says, the infallible word of God, the word that's true and it doesn't fail. It's the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. It says, let your requests be made known to God. And how do you do that? Through prayer. By asking and talking to God, make it known. I need to make it known that you cannot hesitate uh, at going to God and asking because he's telling you, he's telling you because he told me, he's telling me to tell you to ask. We cannot be fearful to ask and we cannot doubt when we go to God to ask. In the book of James, uh, chapter one, verse six through eight, it says, but when you pray, you must believe and not doubt at all because whoever doubts is like a wave in the sea that is driven and blown about uh, by the wind. And why is it that you don't uh, pray? Why is it that you doubt? 
Are you afraid that he's not going to grant your request? <laughs> I'm telling you, this is a powerful message and I need you to understand that it's not difficult to understand. Just ask. I, I remember coming, growing up as uh, young kids and my parents always provided for us. And at Christmas time, they said, make a list of three things that you want for Christmas. And we made our list and, and, and no matter what we asked for, we always got it because they loved us and we asked for it. They asked us to give them something and in return, we gave them what they asked for. Hallelujah. Let me tell you a story and you may have heard this before, but I'm going to share it with you if, uh, or with the people who haven't heard it. A man died and went to heaven. He was met at the pearly gates by St. Peter, who offered to show him the home God had prepared for him. The man's excitement grew as he and St. Peter passed the street line with beautiful mansions, but they did not stop. The man was still enthusiastic as he and St. Peter walked by a street line with, a smaller, with smaller but still lovely houses. Once again, they did not stop. The man began to wonder just what type of home was waiting for him when St. Peter stopped in front of an attractive tiny house. And this is your home, Peter explained. Even though it was not a spectacular mansion that they passed before or a magnificent house, the man was still thrilled. After all, the little house was in heaven, hallelujah. But the man's excitement faded as he opened the front door of this heavenly home. Instead of beautifully furnished rooms, he saw stacks and stacks of unopened boxes. In fact, every room was filled with boxes stacked from the ceiling to the floor. And when the man asked St. Peter what was inside the boxes, Peter smiled sadly and said, these are the gifts and blessings God had for you on earth. The very confused man responded, why didn't he send them to me? St. Peter smiled sadly and said, because you never asked. Woo! You never asked. God has so many blessings for us. He wants to give us what we desire, but we need to ask. I love stories that help us get a point across. Did you hear that? This story makes James 4.2 so true. You have not because you do not ask. And when you ask, you ask amiss. That means you ask doubting. You're asking not believing that God's going to move. It is simple as that. I can't stress that enough. Asking implies consciousness of need and the belief that God hears our prayers is making a request. In the Bible, asking is a way to communicate with God about our needs and our desires. The Greek word atilo, which is translated as ask, can also mean to request, to petition, and to demand. So to ask in prayer is an act of obedience because the word tells us to do it. I always talk about us being obedient. And if the word is telling us to ask, we need to act on what the word says. God calls us to pray and we must respond to what he tells us to do. When we don't respond, when we don't ask because the word tells us, that's an act of disobedience. When we accept Christ through the act of salvation, God tells us we can just ask. And one of the great blessings of salvation is that Jesus Christ is now our high priest, our mediator who opens the way for us to go to the Father with confidence for all areas of needs in our lives. So when he says, just ask, he was offering the reassurance to let you know and to let me know that he wants to help us in the time of need. Whatever we want, 
God's got it. Hallelujah. Are you excited yet? I am. Hebrews 4, 16 says, let us, that means you, that means me, that means everyone listening to this broadcast right now, live, anyone who's going to be listening later. It said, let us then approach God's throne of grace with confidence so that we may receive what mercy and find grace to help us in our time of need. That's what Hebrews 4.16 says, to help us in time of need when we approach God's throne of grace and ask for what we need. Amen. It is the word of God that tells us that we can confidently approach the heavenly throne, knowing that our prayers and our petitions, when we ask, are welcomed by God and desired by our, our heavenly father. It is called the throne of grace. Why? Because it flows from it flows uh, God's love, his mercy, his help, his wisdom, his forgiveness is given to us. We are given spiritual power, the spiritual gifts, the fruit of the Holy Spirit, and all that we need is in any and all circumstances is for us, and all we have to do is ask. Take that in. The throne of grace is called the throne of grace because it, it from it flows God's love. And out of that love, he gives us, he's, he pours into our life, his hand, right hand of righteousness, his right hand of power, his everything is given to us, is poured down on us. And, and all we have to do, whatever we need, ask for it. You're going to keep hearing me say that word, just ask over and over because that's what he told me. Just ask. You don't understand the magnitude or the significance of how that made me feel and how it's going to bless you if you just go and ask God for what you need. Hush. Prayer is the necessary link receiving to receiving what God has for you, his blessings and power to receive the fulfillment of his promises. Prayer, meaning asking God, seeking his face. So how often do you want or need something and instead of going to God and asking him, you grieve about what you need, you whine about, oh, woe is me, I don't have it. You complain, you get mad and angry. Yet, the simple solution the simple remedy is just ask. <laughs> You're going through all those different emotions, unnecessary emotions, crying, sleepless nights, because you're not doing what the word of God says, and that's to ask. There are too many times when we have neglected or ignored God because it just wasn't convenient for us to stop our busy life, the busyness that we go through in our lives to seek God and share our needs and our concerns to him. And why should we do that? Because he is the source of our help. And even if we do not pray regularly, it can feel more like a duty than a delight. We need to delight ourselves in the Lord. We need to seek him. It should not be, oh man, I got to pray today. We should get up and, oh, I got to go before the Lord. Thank you for waking me up this morning. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. I don't care how early it is. I've been up since 11 o'clock. I, I laid down at seven, woke up at 11, and I've been up the rest of the evening. Amen. Who, Jesus. And you know what? I'm still alert because God wants me to share this gospel with you. He wants me to share this word with you. And I am excited because I know since I got that word, how I've been on my knees praying and I've seen God move in situations woo, that we've been seeking after. My husband had a doctor bill that he been, he's been paying on for two years he's, and made the comment, uh, uh, 
This bill I've been paying on for so long and the balance doesn't seem to be going down. We prayed, Lord, cancel this debt. And you know what? We checked the balance. This doggone balance is under $200. <laughs> God is so good. Woo, there are times sometimes we don't think prayer will make a difference or we rely on ourselves to handle and figure out what we need to do. So in other words, we depend on our own abilities and knowledge instead of turning to the all-powerful, all-knowing God. He's all powerful. Do you realize what that means? There is nothing too hard for him. Nothing is impossible for him. When we ask, he can say, just like he created heaven and earth, let there be, and it will be. Let there be, and it was. Over our situation, when we give it to God, let it be. Turn over the situation. Change the situation on behalf of my son or my daughter. Let it be. Ooh, Jesus. That is why he spoke, just ask. He, this is something that he wants all of us to know that we can and should continuously, persistently go to him in prayer. If he did not, he would not have told us to do it in the word, to ask. He would not have given me through the power of the Holy Spirit, the message to just ask. Why do I say this? Because it is the truth. In the book of Numbers, chapter 23, verse 19 says that God is not a man that he should lie. So if he tells us to ask, he's not lying to us. He's going to do what he says he's going to do. People of God, we have been given a formula for God to respond to our needs and desires. And that formula can be found in the acronym ASK, which spells ask. Jeremiah 29 and 12 through 13, Jeremiah 12 verses, uh, uh, Jeremiah chapter 29, verse 12 through 13 says, then shall you call on me through prayer by asking, and you shall go and pray to me. And you know what he promised? He said, and I will listen to you. You will seek me and find me when you search for me with your all your heart. So make a note to, of the word seek, because I'm going to talk about that a little, little bit later. So pray, seek, and you will find me. That's what he's telling you, and that's what he told me. So I want you to get to the place where you want to pray and get excited about your prayer life instead of feeling that you ought to pray. Listen, when God told me to just ask, you know, I felt so excited and joyful. I feel that he was listening and is, is listening and anxious to hear from me. And just as I am excited and anxious to hear and receive answers to my prayer requests. So he's anxious to hear from me and I'm anxious to hear and get my answers. And that's how you need to be by the end of this message. Or even right now, because I'm not even halfway through. But I've already made clear that we just need to ask. My focus, my focus each day. And, and when I pray, I, I, I'm praying that it becomes your focus. That's what my prayer is going to be for you this week is that you get focused and that you begin to ask. It is to seek God's face and to just ask for what you desire. So the word of God tells us he will give you the desires of your heart. You first have to have a desire. And when you pray, we are pouring out what he's pouring out to us, what we desire. When we pray, we're pouring out to him what's in our heart and what we desire. And because we're pouring out to him what's in our heart and what we desire, he's going to pour his blessings into your life. He's going to give you what you ask for. 
So asking through prayer is one of the ways in which man cooperates with God. It is a means by which man calls upon God. And it is the process by which man is moved by God's spirit. It's about seeking God with a sincere heart. In my prayer this week with my prayer partner, one of my nephews, it was such a powerful prayer that the Holy Spirit just took over. And I began to pray in tongues in the spirit and God moved. Oh, Jesus. To be without prayer is to break off your relationship with God. It's, it would be impossible to win God's praise because you're not talking to him. And as a believer in God, we must, we, we, the more we pray, the more we ask, that is the more we are moved by God, the more we will be filled with resolution and answers to our prayers. It is during our prayer time that we are often encouraged and enlightened on what to do and how to do it. And it's during my prayer time, once again, that God just simply spoke, just ask. And this is what he wanted me to share. What I know and understand about God is this. God loves it when we trust him and don't place any restrictions or limits on what he is able to do. He wants us to think big, ask for miraculous things, pray big prayers and not limit our prayers by what we think is possible. Don't be afraid to ask. We need to ask because if you know the attributes of God, if you know who God is, then you know the God that I know and have a relationship with, the God that I serve and the God that I believe has unlimited power. He is a big God that can do big things. I believe in his sovereignty and I hope you do too. And God has the power, the wisdom and authority to do whatever he chooses to do. Don't pick and choose them and have selective prayer. Give it to God. And if it's within his will, he'll do it for you. I believe in his um, obstinance, meaning God has all power over all things at all times. Even when you look at what's going on on this earth, he's still in control. I know of his glory, hallelujah, that every act that God does in response to prayer radiates what his majesty. Because he sits on the throne. He's king of king and lord of lords. He's the bright and morning star. He is the great I am. He is a God of the impossible. God told me to tell every listener to ask. And what does scripture say about asking? That's a question. And I'm going to give you some scripture. But I'm going to ask another question before I give you the scripture. What are you worried about? What is it that you're worried about? There is a command to ask. Followed by a result. And how God response when you pray. Listen to the what and the how as I read these scriptures. This is what Jesus said in Matthew 21 and 22. He said that whatever, 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 do you get that? Whatever we ask for in faith, whatever, it doesn't matter what, whatever you need a job, whatever you ask in faith, we will receive that if it's good for us and according to God's will. God will never answer a prayer that is contrary to his will. So whatever we ask for in faith, if you need a job, ask for it in faith. If you're, you need healing, ask for it in faith. If you need debt canceled, ask for it in faith. In faith. If you want a new house, ask for it in faith. If you want your, your sons and your daughters saved, ask for it in faith. If you want a spouse, ask for it in faith. Mark eleven twenty four 24 said, when you pray to ask God for anything 
believe in him, believe that you have received that thing. And that's an act of faith when you believe it before you receive it. Amen. So then you will have whatever you ask for. So if you believe it before you receive it, you're showing how much faith you have in God. Amen. We have to believe when we pray. John 16, 24 in the English Standard Version, it says, until now you have nothing, you have asked nothing in my name. Is that you? Is that you, you, you? And you have asked nothing in my name, but ask, he's saying ask, and you will receive that what? That your joy may be full. So to ask in his name means we are praying for things within God's will, something that Jesus wants us to do. And this also goes to motive. God does not obligate himself to answer selfish carnal requests from his children. Don't be the one that's not asking and you're sitting, sitting around not uh, moping and, and complaining about what you don't have. The apostle Paul said in Ephesians 3.20 in the uh, King James Version, now unto him that is able, that is able to do what? To do exceedingly, abundantly, immeasurably more, immeasurably more above all that what? We ask or think, and when we think, we imagine, according to the power that worketh in us, and that's through the power of the Holy Spirit. So there are three points that I want to I want to share about this verse that should help you to seek God more in prayer. The Paul, the Apostle Paul expressed his confidence that God can answer prayers and fulfill expectations in ways that people may not think were possible. Did you get it? I'm going to say it again. The Apostle Paul expressed confidence that God can answer prayers and fulfill expectations in ways that people might not think are possible. Secondly, God is not limited by the impossible. It's only us who limit our prayers. And then thirdly, God will do for us not only more exceedingly, immeasurably more than we ask and desire in prayer, but also even more than our imagination can even perceive. Hallelujah. I hope this word is blessing you today. I hope this word is helping you today. Huh. I just want to shout right now, but I got a message I got to complete. Oh, Jesus. Let me share a story from the word. This is what it means to uh, exceedingly, to do exceedingly beyond immeasurably more and above what we can ask or imagine. In the book of Joshua, chapter 10, verse 12, Joshua, the leader of the Israelites, had prayed and asked God to cause the moon and sun to stand still so that his army could continue fighting by daylight. They were in a battle and it was getting dark. So he prayed, Lord, cause the moon and the sun to stand still. Hallelujah. Because they wanted to conquer the Amorites. Joshua must have realized that he was asking for the impossible. Can you imagine God have the sun and moon stand still? In other words, stop time. I need you to stop time for a little while. I need you to pause time. I don't want it to get dark, so pause time. And you know what God did? He did exactly what he asked, what Joshua asked for, and made the moon and the sun stand still. But you know what he also did? God further assisted Joshua by calling up a powerful storm to bombard the Canaanites with rain and hailstorms or hailstones, amen? So what has God done in your life that you knew it could have only been God that worked it out and provided for you? Think about that. You may not realize it, but he's done things for each and every one of you that you know it was God. I 
can tell you one thing if you've accepted Christ in your life. He turned your life around. He forgave you for your sins. He made you whole, amen? He created you. He made you into a new creature where old things were passed away and you became new. That was only God that did that. I'm telling you, the word is not deep. It's not confusion. confusing. It's simple. If you just take the time to just think about the little things. In the early church, prayer was clearly a high priority and an integral part of their life together. In the book of Acts, where there was much prayer going forth, um, and there was much activity of the Holy Spirit, which resulted in miraculous signs and wonders. God still performs signs and wonders today. So if we depend on our Heavenly Father by going to Him in prayer, we can and will experience the same source of power as our Lord and in the early church when we learn to just ask. Jeremiah 33 and 3 says this, so call to me and I will answer and show you great and mighty things which you do not know. When he says call to me, that means come to me and ask, pray. So we have the ability and power to be overcomers, especially during spiritual battles. I always say the devil comes to kill, steal, and destroy, amen? Amen. We're in the, and when that happens, it's a spiritual battle that's taking place. We need to pray because we have an enemy, the devil, who wants to rob us of the, the things that God wants to give us. Prayer is the only one to stand, to help us to stand firm against the devil's tricks. To recognize it's the devil that's attacking I don't care who he uses, it's a spiritual battle. And when it happens, it calls for a diligent and intensified prayer life. Listen to what Ephesians 6, 18 in the Amplified Bible, listen to what it says. With all prayer, did you hear me? With all prayer and, sup and petition, pray with specific requests at all times on every occasion and in every season, be specific in your prayer life and pray in the spirit. And with this in view, stay alert with all perseverance and petition, interceding in prayer for all God's people. So we need to not only pray for ourselves and ask for ourselves. There's times we need to intercede and ask for our family members, for our children, for our friends for those in the workplace. So there are three conditions in, in, in asking. Matthew 6.10 in the New King James Version, Matthew 6.10 says, we have to ask according to God's will, your will be done in earth as it is in heaven. And then 1 John 3.22 in the Amplified Bible, and we receive from him whatever we ask because we carefully and consistently do what? Keep his commandments and do the things that are pleasing in his sight. Habitually seeking to follow his plan for us. To make it simple with one word from that scripture. What it's saying? Obedience. He wants obedience from us. He wants us to be obedient. And part of that obedience is doing what the word says. Just ask. <laughs> ask, ask. You hear how many times I'm using the word ask? Scripture, ask, ask. So what are you worried about? What's troubling you? What's causing you anxious to be anxious? What family uh, issue are you dealing with? What sin aren't you able to let go of? 
What addictions do you have? What are your afflictions and the hardships that you're, you are dealing with in your life? Why are you distressed? What critical decisions do you have to make? What exists in your life that could have been prevented, resolved, or you had, could have been delivered from if you had only prayed and sought and asked God for an answer, for direction, or for help? Far too often, we do not have because we do not ask God for it. Or you are not persistent or have persevered in your request uh, to God. You give up. You give up too quick. If you pray one time, you don't see a result. You give up and say, God didn't answer my prayer. Sometimes we have to be persistent. And keep on asking. Until God gives you an answer, he speaks. Because sometimes it's just wait, you just have to wait a minute. You have to wait. Or he'll say, I got something better for you. He's not going to give you exactly what you asked for, but he's going to give you what you need. God wants us. He wants you and me to develop persistence in prayer because he wants us to develop what? A habit of coming and going to him in prayer. Make a note of this. God has not placed any restrictions on the number of times that we can go to him and ask. We are the ones that place restrictions on ourselves concerning our situation. We do it to ourselves. We, 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 we hurt ourselves. We do it to us. Nobody else but us. We do it to us. So perseverance is, is not giving up. It's, it's persistence and, and having a tenacity, the effort required to do something and keep doing it until you get uh, to the end, even if it's hard, even if it, it's difficult, even if it takes a year, two years, five years. I prayed for a husband for years and I didn't get married until I was in my fifties. And I started praying when I was in my late twenties. I'm telling you, but I didn't give up. So when people continue to ask, they remain in relationship with God and remain dependent on him. I couldn't do it on my own. We have to depend on God. And they also remain connected with the well. Who? Oh, that never runs dry. And that's God is, is the well that never runs dry. You don't have a failure in your life that that's not a prayer failure. So perseverance and persistence prayer is what led to the fulfillment of the promise or the Holy Spirit being poured out on the people who participated in prayer. Jesus told them not to leave Jerusalem, but wait for the promised gift. And while they waited, they prayed. You can find that when you read the book of Acts, chapter 1, and also chapter 2. Before Jesus left, he said, don't leave. You need to stay here and, and continue praying. So you can receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Acts 1.14 says, all these with one mind and one purpose were, were what? Continually devoting. That means were persistent. They persevered uh, consistently praying, devoting themselves to prayer, waiting together along with the women and Mary, the mother of Jesus and his brothers. So his followers joined together constantly, continually in the prayer in the upper room until the power of the Holy Spirit was poured out on them on the day of Pentecost. They, they were obedient. They didn't leave. They just continued in prayer, persistently waiting, waiting, waiting until the Holy Spirit was poured out on them. First Thessalonians, I know you heard me. I know I was specific in my asking. 
and I'm still waiting, believing that you're going to fulfill. And I thank you for fulfilling it. You, you're saying, I believe you, Lord. I have faith in you, Lord. I know it's going to happen, Lord. And I'm going to keep thanking you until I receive it. Ooh, keep asking and keep thanking. <laughs> keep giving thanks to him. Colossians 4, 2 and 6 in the English Standard Version says, continue Continue steadfastly in prayer, being watchful in it with what? Thanksgiving. So throughout the word of God, we find scripture after scripture that's telling us to pray and to ask. It's not always asking for material things either. He promised that if we sincerely ask for God's mercy, for his grace and salvation, we will truly receive it according to our faith. And this promise reassures us that we can ask, we can seek and knock with faith and God will do what he's going to respond. Jesus taught us to pray in the Lord's prayer. And in Matthew chapter seven, Jesus is teaching us how to pray and encourage us, encouraging us to persevere in prayer. And I just talked about perseverance. He is addressing the fundamental underlying attitudes of our heart that shape whether we pray or not. We have to have a heart to pray. That heart is a heart of love, trusting, believing God. It, the, the Matthew chapter 7 suggests that God will give what is needed to those who have the faith to ask for it. However, Jesus doesn't say that believers will always get what they ask for. Wrong motives can hinder answers to prayer. You don't want to pray that God, that, uh, God hurt someone who hurt you. Get revenge on them, Lord. No, that's wrong motives. <laughs> you can't do that. And you should not do that. You should pray that you're able to forgive them. And if they did something to you, that they come to you and ask for forgiveness. I, it's, it's, I know it's difficult at times to pray for your enemy, but that's something that God tells us to do. So with that said, let me give you the scripture, Matthew 7, uh, 7 through 11 amplified. It says this, and count how many times the word acts ASK or asking shows up. Ask and keep on asking and it will be given to you. Seek and keep on seeking and you will find. Knock and keep on knocking and the door will be open to you. Verse 8 says, for everyone who keeps on asking receives and he keeps on seeking finds and to him who keeps on knocking, it will be open. Oh, what man is there among you who if his son asked for bread, will instead give him a stone. Or if he asked for fish, will instead give him a snake. Snake. If then evil, sinful by nature, as you are, know how to give good and advantageous gifts to your children, how much more will your father who is in heaven, perfect as he is, give what is good and advantageous to those who keep on asking? Keep on, keep on, keep on, keep on, keep on, keep on asking him. Six times. Either the word ask or asking is in this one little scripture. And once again, perseverance. If you keep on, keep on, keep on, keep on, keep on asking him. Did you hear what the word ask, seek, and knock? And did you hear what it says when you ask, seek, and knock? If Jesus tells his followers to ask, seek, and knock, and promises everyone who keeps on persistently asking, does what? Receives. He who keeps on persistently seeking him, finds him. Amen? And to him who keeps persistently on knocking, it will be open.
You ever been at home and someone knocks on your door or or rings your del doorbell, you really don't want to answer it? And there's times we know as salespeople, we ignore it. But if they lay on that bell, or keep on knocking, eventually you're going to get up and open that door because they were persistent. You may not want to hear what they have to say, but they were persistent and they opened that door. But with, but with God, if we're persistent, he never peeks out the curtain and say, I'm not answering that. I'm not answer, I'm not answering that door. I'm not answering that doorbell. He never sh sh shuts us out. Never. We don't have to He never does that. And he never will. If we just ask. And and what you need to understand. What does asking, seeking, and knocking imply? Asking is a verbal request to God for needs and desires. Seeking is using the mind and heart to search for God, his word, and his will. And you know what? Just like he opens the door, he desires to be found when we seek him. Knocking is doing something. It's a physical movement. It's persistent prayer. Um to seek an entrance by knocking at the heaven's door continuously. We are not to just ask once and quit. We should continuously ask. I've said that. So God calls us who are just asking to do what? To be humble, to pray, and to seek God's face and turn from sin, according to 2 Corinthians, um, 2 Chronicles 7.14. He's, he said we have to be humble when we go to him. We have to pray and seek his face. And what does Second Chronicles 7.14 say in response to when we are humble, when we pray and when we seek God's face? He said God will respond to the people's cries and that if God's people humble themselves and seek him, they will bring blessings to the world and to ourselves. That's because of God. And he loves us and he wants us blessed. Others say that self-humbling serve uh, in this verse means turning away from pride and turning to God in prayer. We cannot be pride, hold on to pride to, to receive from God. We have to shake that pride off and ask the Holy Spirit to deliver you from that spirit because pride is a spirit. I'm not asking because I can do it myself. No, stop being prideful. Ask God to deliver you from that or any anything else that may have you hindered, unforgiveness. God, pray about it. Ask God, he'll deliver you. That's a spirit. Hatred, that's a spirit. God can and will deliver you. The conclusion is that God will give us what we ask for. The caveat is that what we ask for must be good for us. And Jesus said the Father would give us good things. He'll give us good gifts to those who ask and seek. And one of the good gifts of prayer is that it changes us and what we ask for. Prayer that longs to know the giver more than his generous gifts will move to ask for what is best for us. When we get to know God, because we're talking to him and he's responding to us, we'll get to the place where we'll, get, uh, we'll begin to ask for what is in the perfect will of God and not ask for the ridiculous. So why uh, would we not go to God who is able to do above more than what we ask? It's time to take that step, time to make a change. It's time to understand God's abilities. Go to the word and read it. People of God, it's time to fully embrace all that God is and all that God can do. Establish a mindset to trust God and his ab abilities. What 
has God promised that you have not received yet? I asked that question earlier. But let me extend that question a little further since I'm at the end of my, my broadcast. Have you stopped praying? Have you stopped seeking God? Have you stopped asking? The answer to that question is for you to examine your prayer life. Just ask. I can't say it enough. I can't stress it enough. Jesus wants to bless each and every one of you, uh, of us who belong to him. He wants all of us to have a victorious uh, life in this earth. He wants each and every one of us to have a, a full life, a blessed life. To have everything we need, to have every need met. Because he's there, our father, the shepherd. He's there for us to meet every need. We have to understand that Christ is... Assurance that assures us that if we ask, we will receive what they ask based on factors that we have to act on consistently. Ask, ask, ask. I said this earlier. You need a job, ask. If you need a spiritual or physical healing, ask. If you need some money, ask. If you need deliverance, tell them what you need to be delivered from. Ask God, even ask God to show you you if you don't know that you need help. The last scripture that I want to give you is this. 1 Thessalonians 5, 16 through 18. And I'm rejoicing because it says rejoice always. Pray continually. Give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. So that's the message today. Hallelujah. Ask. Just ask. God is so good. Share this broadcast with your friends and family. Tell them to go to the YouTube channel, Pastor Sandra Carter, The Spoken Word, to see this broadcast and past broadcasts. And then, you know what I'm going to ask? I'm going to ask that you give today. That you reach in your pocket and you give. You can give through Givelify. You can give through Cash App. You can give through Zelle. Give. Give to this broadcast. Give to this ministry. We appreciate those who give on a consistent basis. We appreciate you. But let me ask a question. If you were in church, in a building, and they took up an offering, would you let that plate go by and not give? Would you not walk up and give something? Consider this a ministry and begin to, to move. Because God wants the best for, for all of us. And he will do what needs to be done to get us what we ask for. So that's my broadcast. Have a blessed week this week. Hallelujah. And just ask. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm praying that this message put a smile on your face. Because like I said, I was excited when God gave me this word. So until next week, just ask. Hallelujah.